for being independent from colonial rule. What does it mean to be a warrior? We must not take peace for granted. You die, we will make sure to put the Malaysian flag on your coffin. Hello everyone, welcome back to another special episode of Beyond the Headlines. My name is Amalina Kamal. And I'm Hazwin Hassan. Hari Pahlawan is a day of profound significance for all Malaysians. It's a moment to pause and remember the immense responsibility and pride that comes with serving our country. Today, we honour our heroes who have made the ultimate sacrifice and we reflect on their endearing legacy. Helping us to explore the bravery and dedication that have shaped Malaysia into what it is today, we will be speaking to two former chiefs of armed forces. With us in the studio today is retired General Tansri Rajo Muhammad Afandi, Rajo Muhammad Noor, who served as the 19th Chief of Armed Forces. Hello Tansri, welcome to Beyond the Headlines. Thank you so much, uh, Azwin. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, uh, today, as well, I, how can I say it? I'm touched and uh, I'm very honoured uh, to be around after quite Quite, quite sometimes I've been mm -hmm. off behind the scenes somewhere. 42 years, right? Yeah, for almost six years. Oh. Yeah, two ye but my two years was with uh, LTAT. But having said that, to be with you on this special day, the Hari Palawan, is something that, uh, I mean, it makes my day. Oh. Uh, it makes my day, really. I, I'm, I'm honoured and I thank you so much. The pleasure is ours, yeah. Nancy. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. We're equally honoured to have you here as yeah. with us as well. And to our audience, we will also feature our special interview with retired General Tan Sri Zulkifli Mama Zain. So do stay tuned to us. Now, back here on set, let's uh, start with the question of what does Hari Pahlawan mean? Tan Sri, maybe you can enlighten us. I, I grew up, when, we, when, when, when I grew up in schools, we saw a lot of people been that during that time die. Soldiers dying, you can see them. You can uh, then we have a volley. When they have a burial, special military burial, they have a vol uh, they, they have volleys and they were full of ceremonies. So that is something that I can what I call now I can s what this join this to whatever whatever it is now. Right. We're talking about. Uh, Hari Palawan. That is to remember the one who have the sacrifice that they have done. Mm -hmm. Hari Palawan is a day also to chart what is today forward. Mm. And Hari Palawan is to ensure the sovereignty of our country remains because we have people who are willing to sacrifice themselves for this country. Right. That's how I feel. But Tantri, for the celebration itself, are there um, you know, any sort of like traditions that you look forward to, especially whenever this day arrives every year? Oh yeah. Um, I've been attending, while well, when I retired, I've been attending right. the, 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 uh, the ceremony to celebrate the day. But in the f during my uh, Unforces Day too, doing my service I, I i did attend that and it it just means something now later on maybe we'll talk more about uh, how what do i feel about it yep. uh, how how much better things that we can do out of it and where i see personally i feel it can be better mm -hmm. so having said that i there's a lot of things there are a few things maybe that uh, we can do just to, to ensure that uh, it, it, is, it is better. Mm. Yeah. And in particular for this year, for the National Hari Pahlawan Celebration in Putrajaya, yeah. uh, it will feature a pantomime um, to commemorate the sacrifices of our military men and women, including the, uh, from the police as well. Is this something that has traditionally been done? Um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, this pantomime they, uh, came in into being what? Maybe about ten years ago. Or right. Okay. It is not been. It is not been uh, one of those uh, programs uh, during Hari Palawan. But mind you, when we celebrate Hari Palawan, it is not national. Uh, what we call in KL only. 
the states also will be having their own Hari Pahlawan and, uh, and uh, our rulers, the Sultan will be attending this, uh, mm. this Hari Pahlawan. So, uh, it's it just what we say in Malay, pengisian, you know, it's, it's just <laughs> something to fill up, uh, to show uh, that what sacrifice that people have done to the rakyat, to, 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 to the country. You see, how can I put it? You know? Hari Palawan at the moment is a day that been celebrated by people in, by people wearing this uniform. Just by the military, you're Just telling me. Just by the military, see, right. or by those uh, people who have uh, what are called the uniform bodies, right. mm. yeah, the police oh. and all these you know, forces. It has not been a truly national sort of thing where when riot feels mm. the people feels the contribution that they have done respect the sacrifice that have been given by those uh, in my in our my case the soldiers right. they sacrifice themselves they sacrifice they sacrifice themselves they sacrifice their family their children just for the purpose to ask about career they are not a carrier to say but this it is sacrificing themselves. Who want to die? Mm. Mm. So what? So what do you think are some of the challenges? I suppose in you know raising better awareness for the general public to re not just um, respect the, the those in uniform, our military men, but also you know um, appreciate uh, the sacrifice. I mean, we say the word sacrifice here a lot, yeah. right? But mm. I suppose the time given to and defend service, the country because yeah. ultimately you are all servicemen, right? So your service to the country. Just to echo a little bit of what I, where I was just now. That see, how many pages in your Straight Times, for instance, that big companies buy and say we salute those people who have mm. sacrificed themselves right. to the country. I I don't think so. I have not seen. Oh, I've seen maybe a few of this company, but we have not seen really those people buying one big page. Mm -hmm. We salute this, uh, those who have sacrificed themselves for this country. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about time for us to look into that. You know? right. Having such... Uh, your, your comment is purely based on uh, seeing how the reactions have always been ceremonial when it comes to celebrating this yeah, particular yeah, uh, yeah. you know uh, day when in fact every day the nation is yeah. being protected every day we have you know our servicemen yep. um, guarding uh, our sovereignty so that is probably one thing that we want to highlight mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. um, talking about sacrifice again uh, and okay. we want to zero in on your own in, I mean in, uh, on your own you know uh, sacrifices basically you have been in the service for more than 40 years, 43 years, in fact. We spoke about it outside of the show. Um, so probably, could you share your own personal, I suppose, um, you know, glorifying moment that made you want to love, uh, sorry, made you want to, you know, continue your duty? Well, when, the, when we join, for those who join the service, well, as I say just now, we, we, if we look into it as a career, then we're going to have a little bit of problems there. We must look into it as, as a sacrifice that we've been doing mm. eh, to the little things that we can do to the country. And this is what I think most of us have. Those, uh, you know, when we fought the communists in way back uh, until they signed in 1989, everybody, they re we really don't know what's going to happen to us. You know that you'll be in the jungle carrying about 40 kilos of uh, things behind your, your house. Mm. It's your kitchen, it is your bed, <laughs> and, and it is your best dress. Everything is about inside. survival. Mm. It's it, 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 inside, uh, inside your pack and you have to carry it. And normally it goes to about what, 40 kgs beside them extra ammunition. Eh? We have to move track along the jungle, move up and, you know, that sort of thing. So it is, it is not something that easy. The, those sailors who sails, those airmen yeah. who without fails will 
continuously to support supporting the ground troops to make sure everything mm. is okay. So, what is it if it is not your good words say it is about sacrifice? So, to, as for me, that is the 40 years that I have given. 40 years is more than my, 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 my life. It's more than half of my life. Mm -hmm. yeah? So I'm now 67. I, I'm born on uh, soon going to be National Day. So 67. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be our 67 uh, Independence Day, right? Yes. Yes. Right. Right. yes. So, and uh, to me, when you move, or you rather the operation that you, you, you did inside the jungle is all about trying to protect also those under your command. Right. Mm -hmm. You can see during that time, people uh, were soldiers being, um, being winched out from, uh, from the jungle. Right. They lost their leg mm. due to bobby traps. Some are just uh, it is just, it's just sad things that, uh, that, that, that have, 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 have happened. So as for me, directly, we, have, we don't have any contact. Everybody looking into contacts means you just, what you call, with, with enemy, you know, you start firing, cross firing with enemies and all. I don't. But people suffering from all these mm. uh, incidences, losing their legs. Right. Yes, we and we're talking about a number of um, servicemen here, military men here, right? Not not just one singular individual. How many um, have actually lost their limbs to Ooh. again protect the country? There, 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 there are a lot of that. I cannot remember. There are a lot, mm. a lot. Mm. And you know, <laughs> if if those people outside they start looking into it, you, you just imagine who wants to lose a limb? Yeah, nobody. In, in your over 40 years, 43 years of service, which period or which event in particular would you say has been the highlight uh, of your time uh, in the military, as well as you know, since now we're uh, going up to our 67th year of being independent from colonial rule? Um, what's, and on top of like from your experience in being in the service, what has been the most significant thing that has shaped, that has shaped our armed forces to be what it is today? Right. I'm sorry if 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 you are going to use the word one significant I don't think one significant things mm -hmm. incidents will shape a thing. No, it is about many things that really shape the thing and make the organization mature. Mm. We mature because we have gone through processes. You know, we talk about uh, doing the right thing and uh, improving the things. You know, in military. Uh, there are processes. One of those is to update your doctrine to make sure that your doctrines are all right. right. So incidents happen, things happen, mm. you're losing people, but that should not be, uh, the next thing should not happen again in the same manner. So you have to improve it. So when you say one incident will have what I call uh, one incident that, that make what I'm forces now, I don't think so. Our I'm forces is young. Hmm. About, about 80 over 80 over years, 90 maybe now. I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> but about 90, but 90 as co as compared to other armed forces, we are nowhere. But please, numbers are just numbers. But our soldiers, our armed forces, matured. They are they are more matured than the. The 90 years that they have had now. Understood. Right. So, um, irrespective of the numbers, yeah, it's not actually well numbers, experienced. Right. Yeah, understood. Understood. I mean, um, I, I I understand when it comes to having to you know evaluate uh, the quality of our armed forces. Um, it's not we can't just single out one event. Uh, again, I just want to echo or ask husband's question uh, again. In that period of time, 43 years. Were there any moment that, that, that helped you in terms of shaping yourself as a military man? Mm -mm. Uh, what, a, what can I say? Um, shaping yeah. myself. Yeah. Shaping, shaping myself or shape, shaping the whole organization. It shapes me. There are many things that happen mm. that shapes one person. Right. It, it is not uh, talking about how I have gone through my uh, my career, where I have been posted, 
where I've been people's I met what courses that I mm, uh, have okay. done that shapes that shapes me right but uh, if you look into where you going where I know where you're coming into maybe maybe because this is uh, those people can remember one thing now when you talk about the incidents lahat datu that is one of those right. uh, incidents the lahat datu uh, incursion lahat right. datu incidents and yeah. that also now shapes how uh, the doctrines that how we're going the armed forces going to fight maybe right. in mm. the area. I mean, um, it, it shapes or probably it set the precedence for you know um, our security policies and protocols moving forward, right? In this event whereby there will be a, a potential uh, you know incursion happening. So with that, we actually have a video interview with a retired General Tan Sri Zulkifli Muhammad Zain. Now, in this particular interview, we want to gain further insights on the significance of Hari Pahlawan as well as um, the special operations that he oversaw when he was the Armed Forces Chief. Let's take a look. To be a Pahlawan means embodying courage, sacrifice and unwavering dedication to our nation. Recognizing our warriors isn't just ceremonial. It's about respect and remembering those who stand as our nation's first line of defence. This Hari Pahlawan, let's deepen our appreciation for the immense contributions of our soldiers. Well, I'm proud of many things because uh, uh, we were able to uh, serve the nation uh, in, 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 during my tenure as a, a Chief of the Defence Force. Uh, one is that uh, flood relief operations. Before the establishment of the different agencies, NATMA and so on, the military were in the forefront because there were no other agencies that would be able to assist. Put you an example, on the big flood in Johor, especially in Kota Tinggi in 20, uh, 2000 and, uh, Three, uh, 2004, 2004 and 2005. You see, it was, you know, the flood was there for months, yeah? Over the Chinese New Year and over the uh, ID Adha and so on. You see, after the first one week, other agencies were not able to sustain, not the police, not the, uh, the uh, fire department and so on. It was only the military. We were, because we were equipped, we were self-contained. The military was the uh, main agency that, uh, and of course, the, uh, there are many other things. We were able to assist the police in ensuring internal, you know, internal security and public order and so on. Mm. And not to mention about MH17 and MH370. Yeah, the, the Latu incident has uh, is a, a wake-up call uh, for all of us, uh, for the nation, I would say. Uh, and that means that we must not take peace for granted because uh, the threat may come in many forms, like the one in, uh, we face in Lahad Datu uh, in uh, 2013. It is an, an asymmetric threat, uh, it's not a conventional threat, and it can escalate into a, 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 a bigger threat. Well, the, the, the people were just terrified, so, so much so that uh, we have got to stand him. Stand him. So the, economical, the, the economic activities came to a standstill. I mean, people would not go out, everybody was you know, and uh, economically, the, the country was losing, or as Elis Sabah was losing. You know, Felda Sahabat, a very big uh, oil palm plantation, uh, came to a standstill. They lost a lot of money, uh, and so on. Now, my main concern is this, you see. Uh, if we take action against this group of people who came in, uh, into Ladatu, what would be the implication on the locals in the east coast of Sabah? So what we did was we called uh, uh, 
the director of information, Datu Ibrahim at that time, ketua uh, of uh, Jabatan Penerangan. We do a survey and we start to talk to the community leaders in the East Coast and how they see this problem. Uh, if the military or if the government takes action against these people, what would they are? So they say it is okay, these people has come into Sabah illegally and uh, uh, creating instability, instability in the country. So they said they are Malaysians, they want, it, they want these people to be out. So that's why we, we step in, uh, we are confident in stepping in and getting the support of the local population. As a result of the incursion, we know that the people were terrified and we cannot, the, the government then said that we are not able, we must not leave the people. We went in very quickly, we cannot live out with them. That's why the establishment of ESCOM, meaning the, uh, there is a permanent presence of the security forces in the east, uh, in the east coast of, 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 of Sabah. So that is the uh, a, a result uh, from this uh, Operation Daulat. Mm -hmm. we, we have got the establishment of the ESCOM. And we must also remember that the government, the country, the government especially, has spent or is spending a lot of money to ensure the security, especially of Sabah. Because there are thousands of troops that are being deployed uh, along the coast or on the islands on the east coast of Sabah. Mm. And this costs a lot of money. And we have got troops to, uh, brought from uh, uh, Semenanjung Malaysia on enrollment to ensure that the people in Sabah feel safe and there will be no more incursion and so on. We want to expand a little bit um, yeah. when Tan Sri mentioned about the Ops Daulat, about Sabah, and then how the relationship between the military and the local people have been, um, you know, now been uh, stronger since then. Tan Sri, I just want to go to you because I, I, I know for a fact that you were the chief of staff then, especially during Ops Daulat. You mentioned this to us outside of the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I was the chief of staff to uh, General Tan Sri Zul. Mm -hmm. We call him Zack Zack. Uh, Tan Sri Zul uh, during that time and uh, what I can say is that uh, we we meet the requirement of what uh, we need to do in support of Sabah and it was a very uh, instantaneous and a very uh, quick uh, uh, mobilization of troops equipment and uh, and the rest uh, to Sabah that is to, as what he said, to contain uh, the whole thing uh, into uh, within the area, and eventually we build up from that. Right. And that is how uh, the whole the whole uh, build up hmm. of the whole uh, Obdaulat uh, begins, and 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 end by uh, the action of uh, the armed forces. The navy move the. Uh, uh, the sailors move the uh, armored vehicles, yeah. the Air Force carrying ammunition, 24 hours. Mm. What rest is only <laughs> the human beings, because right. human beings, if I'm not mistaken, they can only, uh, the crew can only fly within it, uh, what we call internationally, mm. eight hours, and then they need to be replaced. The machines continue, right. the human being rest. And that also not enough. Then during that time, with uh, the concurrence of uh, General Zhou, we also move people uh, using chartered flights. And that's to give comfort to the soldiers, right? because right. the soldiers don't know what they're going to face in Lahad Datu. Right. They don't know. They, they, they only read in the papers, they see in the news, but they really don't know what the hell is it. Sorry mm -hmm. if I use the word. <laughs> that's oh, all right. Oh, no. On the uh, is happening on the ground, mm -hmm. so let, let let us give some, them some comfort. So travel. I remember when uh, we hijacked an aircraft from <laughs> from Kota Baru, where uh, they have what they call Asia. If you don't have to reschedule the flight 
to uh, for those uh, the commercial, commercial ones. One, yeah. Commercial one. Mm. We took the aircraft to transport the soldiers. Right. Instead, instead of uh, dissatisfaction, I suppose they they were they were clapping, you know, giving uh, support to the whole uh, the whole thing. So you see, I mean, if you talk about Hari Pahlawan, the message passed also. See, uh, the people support what, mm. uh, what the what you call what the what need to be done. Mm. They they, mm -hmm. they give full support. Mm. And and Tan Sri, I think what maybe um, more more so the uh, younger generation, but I think in general, what a lot of people might not realize is that the whole standoff uh, was from somewhere in February to March in 2013. Right? It was like a mu uh, more than a month. The whole yeah, standoff yeah. wasn't it? And so during that. It, you're talking about an intense operation during the whole period of that time, wasn't it? Yeah. So I, I think there's a wisdom that uh, the government then at, a, at the apex make a decision of how we're going to handle because the whole thing is being contained there. Mm. And you know, uh, rather than he being hasty maybe, because I think there are wisdom uh, that they use in that regards to when they then we react on that accordingly. Do, do you remember, do you have a number of uh, how many uh, fallen servicemen there were from that particular standoff? Uh, we have casualties. Uh, the armed forces, we, we, we have casualties. A fatality, I think one, two in a second. But hmm. our uh, friends from the police have been really, uh, they have a few uh, fatalities there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think six. Maybe mm, of six, yes. huh? And Tanshi, how was the state of mind of the soldiers then? I mean, how, how did you, you know, um, help in terms of mitigating people's, I suppose, discipline? Mm. Um, you get what I mean? Like, the, the, the focus here, especially in, in, in conducting the mission thoroughly. But the, the, there's something that you have to understand about soldiering. Uh, I don't know about other countries, but I can easily say what the, what is what it's all about with our militia soldiers, sailors or airmen. They, they rise to the situation, no? they, they, they meet the situation. Any times they are ready, you can see them, but when it comes a time that we need them, they deliver. Mm -hmm. So this is something that uh, I, I mean, it just, it just maybe through training, maybe because of what is inbuilt inside them, uh, they, they feel that this is what time for them to show that uh, we 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 uh, we mean something. Berbakti kepada negara in that sense, right? Mm. You you wake them up. You say, okay, you have to go to Latda too. Mm. They say, okay, we well, let's go. Nobody, you know, say that uh, you know, no, no, I I mean, it's against my my culture or mm. whatever it is. Yeah. No, 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 they they go and and they did it what is necessary. The incidents happened somewhere, I think, I remember that one very well. China, it is on the Chinese New Year. You say February, February was Chinese yeah. New Year. <laughs> they carried out until that March, is. yeah. By that evening, we have troops mm. on the ground. Mm. Right. Tantri Zuklifi also did mention that the, um, the Ops dialogue was the first time um, where our armed forces were put to the test, not necessarily test, were put into service where all three areas, you know, land, sea, yeah, air, yeah. Um, were deployed. Because previously, it was just practice run, right? Uh, this is an actual mission yeah. to kind of protect the country. What do you have to say on about that? Yeah, uh, I, I believe so because I'm the one who's been uh, <laughs> behind moving all these mobilizing people, your mobilizing yeah. uh, the troops, the system, the equipment, the vehicles, uh, the helicopters, we move it down there. So I, 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 it's something that uh, if he say that uh, as the tri-service uh, operation, yes, and uh, well, there will be some rust somewhere, but mm. there is not a, a rust that uh, really affect the whole conditioning of mm. a system. Mm -hmm. So that I can right. see. Tanshri, right. I want to talk about the like maintaining um, again on mental health, right? The, the those troops who mm -hmm. actually probably mm -hmm. might experience the PTSD here. What sort of uh, support does the military provide uh, after a mission? I remember very well we, because as what uh, as I, I think you are fully aware, the armed forces is just like the country. They have everything is with them. 
we have medical system with us and uh, our medical do have that and they have a doctrine to 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 handle this PSTD I suppose mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they have and their own uh, uh, doctrine for that right yeah and I think we are prepared for that because situation whether it is peacekeeping operation uh, in Lebanon or whether it is uh, an operation here or a pilot uh, flying to to fire on uh, an enemy and there's collateral damage somewhere that will affect them some or other but uh, that should not be the case uh, that they should not be the one that they're going to be with them forever mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so I think I believe that uh, we yeah Don't the medical people personally have that yeah I was just wondering because um, the ops Dalat was domestic right I mean uh, and you you were able to mobilize the army uh, within the country but what about you know, missions that are abroad how do you plan for those Say again the missions that were abroad. Uh -huh. uh, how do you plan for those? Uh, maybe you can give us a, an idea of like when you were chief of staff, and then also when you were the armed forces chief. I see. When we say we, they always rise to the occasion, remember? Just mm -hmm. I mentioned that. Remember uh, Somalia, Black Hawk Down. But yep, yep. That is Saw American the movie version. As well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we have we have given them a true version of what the Bakara market is yes. all about. Mm. You see how they rise, how this soldier sacrificed themselves yeah. to help yeah. to rescue the uh, the Americans in Bakara markets. Mm -hmm. You see, with with uh, a system of equipment that is not as maybe as superior as what the American has, no. We have uh, uh, limited uh, capabilities there, but still, they say no. I will go. You ask uh, what call this? I remember somewhere the, the commander say no, no. We will do. You no. We'll drive you in. We'll go. Right. See, I I can feel Goose, that. Uh, goosebumps. <laughs> uh, see, they, they will rise to location. Militian trust, please. That the armed forces will have. Mm. They were uh, the ability, the capability to do it, and they will always rise to the occasion. And Bak Bakara Market, Somalia is one of those occasions. I think that we, not only our forces to be proud, Malaysians should be proud of. Mm, yeah. Another event that Malaysians should be proud of, it's not necessarily a combat sort of mission, but more of like a COVID mission because um, during, uh, I mean, in like a year after the ops Daulat, uh, Malaysia was, you know, um, <laughs> delivered with tragic news of MH370 as well as MH17. Now, on MH17 itself, um, our Malaysia Airlines flight actually uh, also got tragically shot down and they were flying over eastern Ukraine, a region that was engulfed mm. in, you know, fighting mm. between the Ukrainian uh, forces and the pro-Russian mm. separatists, right? And then we actually sent about 130 personnel mm. um, to Ukraine. And then from there, we uh, formed a uh, 12, 12 team member to go and retrieve those black boxes. I'm sure yeah, you do yeah, know yeah, about that. That, that. that colonel who went there and colonel Sakri negotiate Sakri. with these... Uh, the terrorists or separatists uh, rather. Mm -hmm. The separatists yeah. or the, uh, the uh, rebel groups. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, no, going there <laughs> into Ukraine, a foreign area, a foreign land, foreign language, foreign everything. Right. They still go. They, 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 what are they called? They negotiate and the black box will return to us. Right. Yeah. I mean, we do so have yeah, yeah. a selfless act yes. of yeah, risking mm. their lives, definitely. Yeah. We also have Tan Sri Zulkifli Zain's um, reaction to this, because uh, at the time he was the armed forces chief. In retrieving the, the uh, black box is very important because that's where the evidence is. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, uh, criminal charges can be taken through the international court and so on. So it means a lot to me. I mean, uh, so if without the, the presence of this team that went in, I do not know what is going to happen to the evidence, where it will go, where it will end up and so on. Well, uh, the thing is that uh, the country, yeah, because there are many parties involved, uh, 
uh, in the downing of the MH17. One is Malaysia, of course, because the owner of the carrier, involved. there are passengers from many other nations. Ukraine is involved, Russia is involved. So, so we have got to play uh, our part. Uh, we have got to balance it up. Uh, so, meaning, uh, we cannot. Uh, the gov what the government did was the, uh, any decision that we made must be based on facts, based on information. We have got to collaborate the, uh, the information and so on, because it is very tricky, very delicate. Tan Sri, yeah. with that, I want to ask this question directly to you. How important is it to actually recognize those 12 uh, uh, individuals who actually went on to retrieve those black boxes? As Tan Sri Zulkifli mentioned, these are evidence, you know, to pit the murderer or killers of, uh, I mean, the culprits responsible in the downing of MH17. You mean you want to make a pentamine now? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what I'm trying, uh, what uh, I think we we're supposed to do is you you're trying to say that what the country can do uh, for them. Well, uh, do you we think enough yeah. um, recognition was given, especially yeah. publicly? How can we weigh uh, sacrifice? How can uh, there is no equivalence to sacrifice? Right. Yeah, uh, see, it is her act of heroism. It goes beyond what uh, you, your job spec, all right. If your job spec to do this, okay, I am doing it. Uh, you are doing, it. but if you go beyond than that, sacrificing more than that, uh, putting your life uh, to do something of that, then uh, then some due recognition should be given. So uh, that. I mean, I, I, I will rest the case there. Mm. So whatever uh, the best are of it to think as to whether that uh, warrant uh, such an act, if that act is uh, just a part of your duty or is it beyond? To me, maybe it goes beyond than that to to go to a foreign land to, to do something like that. Uh, that sort of that sort of to rescue a box, mm -hmm. <laughs> a box. It, it is a box, but uh, but a crucial a one, meaningful <laughs> box. Yeah, a crucial <laughs> one. Yeah, right. Tantri. So, I just wanted to know how you think we can do more to improve the way we engage with our younger generation in um, fostering more understanding and and being more appreciative of the sacrifices made. Of what what the, the soldiers or uh, yes, exactly uh, by the uh, by our servicemen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've been, you know, I've been asked this question so many times during my time in service. Now you're asking me again this <laughs> question. So, <laughs> I, I would rather like to pose this question to you now. Being a younger generation, right? <laughs> uh, being a younger generation, what do you expect? You know, what, what we call uh, we we can do. What do you think that you expect we can do? Right. To uh, to instill this uh, spirit of uh, sense of belonging, mm -hmm. sense of resilience, mm -hmm. uh, loving our countries, uh, loyalties, mm -hmm. all this. You know, I, 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 I so wanted to listen it from you. How, how, what so he's turned the tables <laughs> <laughs> around to us. Yeah. 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 Guys. <laughs> I mean, you, you first, you first. <laughs> I mean, for me personally, I think because I grew up um, with a military father, um, oh. Oh, you know, we moved thing. from <laughs> one... Uh, base camp to another. I yeah. grew up uh, going to school in um, Camp Kamenta, which is Mindef. Yeah. Um, and then we moved, my father, when he was assigned to Pustakma, which is the uh, tactical maritime um, center for the Navy. And we moved, in, uh, we moved to Lumut. So I grew up around people in the military. I grew up around servicemen. It, it was a daily thing for me. And I think I understood it very, very well, uh, if I may say so. And I understand that my father, you know, made certain sacrifices. Uh, there were times he was away for months on end, especially during his younger days, when he was off, you know, for to sail. But yeah, how, how many, for me, how many times you pack and unpack? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, many, too many, many times. Yeah, right? I can't. Many I've lost count. Time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For uh. me, I think it's probably 
I would love to see more understanding or more like you know uh, a- engagement, especially on 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 an ed- educational level, especially in primary. I think the only sort of like uh, introduction towards our military was when we learned um, Chirpen. I forgot what was it? Lieutenant Adnan, and then oh, okay. I think mm. yeah. um, in in secondary uh, there was also another one. Uh, it was in the past, not Ops Daulat, but back then um, Bukit. Oh my god. Oh, Bukit Kepong. Ah, Bukit Kepong. Tragedy yes, Bukit right. Kepong, yes. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sarge- right. How about Sajin Hassan? <laughs> Sarge- I mean, yeah, probably. But well, yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, it was black and white. But uh, that, that I think, was one of the first uh, Malay films uh, that really uh, inst- to instill sort of uh, spirit of loyalty mm-hmm. yeah, and sacrifice. Right. That and le- Lieutenant uh, Adnan, I remember. Because uh, I mean, we we have been so good in doing a lot of things. We we, we uh, I I believe that our forces, for instance, there we have our open day. We have the army day. We have all the days that are open, and you know that sort of thing. But I I think that is that sort of thing may not be enough. It has to be supported by something non physical non physical is is you know and it cannot be the military alone to carry this this uh, burden of non physicals uh, for instance having these people going to schools to talk about uh, about uh, what uh, sacrifice is about mm. Mm. Uh, what is what giving giving up something is all about you know and not only taking in but giving up giving back something so I think the non-physical part, the non-physical part, has to be work together with other, other agencies, mm. other government right. ministries, right. and all this. Mm. Maybe it is not. Is it, it can be a just a day curriculum. It can be hours curriculum. That sort of thing. Just you know, inviting uh, uh, people to go. People like me, I can go to schools and talk. It's okay. It's one of those things that we can do. Yeah. Maybe uh, there's current serving uh, members to do it. Mm. That sort of thing. But I believe having uh, the physical things alone not enough to instill that spirit. Mm. To instill uh, the strong bond of uh, living patriotism and right. yeah. we so do the have non-physical part I believe that yes that's yes. how right. I feel correct I do agree Tan Shui Zulkifli also has his own take on how we can instill you know a better awareness and appreciation among our younger generation let's roll that clip well the, the most important thing is if, if you want uh, to cultivate patriotism through warrior ethos I mean, people, a lot of people can contribute, many people can contribute in many ways uh, to show their, that they are patriotic and so on. But what is important is that we must start from a very early age. Uh, because, you know, in some countries, how they develop patriotism and the love to the country and king and so on is, you know, before you know how to read and write, you know what is your national flag, who is your king, who is your, you know, uh, basic. Mm. Uh, that is how it started, your national anthem and so on. You must understand uh, that. Do you think that is, um, you know, across the board for our younger generation? Oh, yes. You must inculcate this in studs from the kindergarten days. Okay. Kindergarten days, where people are taught, yeah, this is your flag, this represents this and then. This is your national anthem. This is your king. This is your. Uh, uh, those are the, the basics that one must understand. And as you go on, you get to, you know, the historical perspective of the country and so on, how the country is developed. But what I, I would like to touch on uh, on uh, uh, the national service. Uh, PLK. Okay. That was a good start. Uh, you mean the return of it? Yeah, the return of it. When we started, uh, it was to, to, to inculcate the sense of uh, uh, patriotism, uh, uh, self, you know. And that, that was, but uh, now it's been brought back, which is good. And, and that is the, 
a good move in 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 trying to uh, develop uh, uh, patriotism, uh, uh, the warrior ethos, and so. Right, PLKN country. <laughs> what do you make of it? Hmm. Because they are, mm. they, it's Aye. supposed to be, you know, one of the I suppose platforms to help catalyst this sort but of. But it like also can be very divisive. Uh. <laughs> Those who are against and so, for it. So uh, I mean, I, I would like to maybe have some uh, a different sort of approach. And I see mm. it. this sort of thing as what uh, Tansi have mentioned also. Yes, to start from early age, and I I believe that I know uh, that that period may not be enough. To, uh, to to further uh, what I call Instill? inculcate that mm. uh, that spirit of loving one uh, country. So uh, as I said just now, I, I mean it has to be a continuous effort. It cannot be just towards the end and you, you, you're going to do this towards the end. Yes, it can do something but it will not be enough to make sure it is in you to make sure that uh, that that, that uh, spirit, the loyalty, the ethos, and everything is in you mm. during that period. It has to be a continuous, and maybe uh, PLKN uh, sort of approach will be the where they graduate. Right. Maybe where they graduate with that, mm. and that is a part where they say, oh, finalize. Oh, this, this is this is the whole thing, and we start from." This age. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good idea. I mean, that's f I would welcome that definitely. I don't think that means that we're forcing people into something. It just means that we we get to celebrate, you know, yeah. what uh, the servicemen have um, provided mm -hmm. for our country. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Tanshree. Yep. We still have a little bit of time. I think around five ten minutes more. But uh, for this, I just want to ask you, especially. Uh, when it comes to uh, retirement here, right? Mm. Um, what sort of um, areas do you still see lacking in in uh, us appreciating our veterans better? Well, uh, I, uh, at the beginning of this uh, conversation of ours, right, I did mention uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about these days, we are talking about past, present, and future. So. When we talk about past, present, and future, the future is always people will be planning for something to mm -hmm. move forward. The present will be enjoying certain things. But what have we done to those past? And this past with regards you know, the veterans uh, at the moment. So I, I believe that uh, there are many things that we should be doing. I, for instance, uh, you know, this is my what I I, I, I I think should be looking into. Because at one time I was looking into having a veterans hospital, having uh, right. thinking about geriatric, right? Geriatric mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. medicines as 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 part of the whole thing. Because uh, uh, this is the way that uh, we repay them to whatever right. what they have done. Yeah? What we are now, what the future is going to be, is what it was done before. Mm. So I, I, I mean that was the whole thing. Uh, I did try to uh, do it, but eventually I don't know where I retired and the thing mm. is. Uh, so there were plans at the time, but it was just um, was it was it uh, an issue of overlapping when it comes to um, the processes no, and operations? Geriatric, ge uh, geriatric. I think I pronounce it correctly. Geriatric. I think. It's, uh, huh? Penuaan, maintenance of uh, old people. So it is not. It, it is. I mean, certain countries they have this uh, genetic medicines uh, sort of approach on certain things. So why don't we start with veterans? Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. how I feel about it. Uh, maybe they have other priorities. I don't know. So uh, we uh, keep it in that manner. So, but uh, these are the areas. What we say. What I'm trying to say is that mm -hmm. we should be looking into this. They are now looking into. I've been. Uh, I mean, uh, on their. The pensions, for instance, mm -hmm. yeah, the pensions. I remember those uh, those uh, being on medical board, uh, medically boarded. They get only a very small amount of uh, right, yeah. pensions. Maybe these are areas that those uh, the government and those in service should be looking into 
in assisting them to, to or at least protect. Yeah, to yeah. give them better, to feel that they are just uh, you know. The, every time we 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 have uh, uh, a medal giving ceremony, they will be written somewhere there. Uh, what uh, quoted by Napoleon? Napoleon says, "Give me." Uh, uh, give me a ribbon so that I can pin on my soldiers. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is about recognizing uh, mm -hmm. what soldiers have done. And in, the, in this regard, the ribbons have been given, but at the same time, we have to look into their the well-being, their well-being, uh, their well-being, and the families also. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I believe this is noble thing. Now, Tantri, currently with, uh, with the pensions for our military men, uh, retired military uh, men and women, um, I, I, what I understand is that they only receive half of what they last earned from yeah. uh, the, 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 the rank that they retired as. Um, so is that something that you, perhaps during your service, in fact, um, did you look into that to further improve it, to raise it? So, uh, Aswin, that... Uh one of those things that I believe that uh, as a soldier that we take care of each other and uh, taking care of each other in this regard is that uh, I believe is from cradle to graves. We receive them as recruits, as officers somewhere in the training, on the training ground and when it comes to time we will bury them. That's what I believe. I believe that as a family is all about taking care and it is from cradles right. to grave. Okay, uh, of late there are some mm -hmm. uh, voices that I've heard also concerning uh, the concern of their pensions. And I think their concerns are quite uh, something that we, we we ha we need to look into, mm -hmm. and if if we talk about uh, recognizing the sacrifice they have done, uh, what they have given, their blood, their sweat, their tears, their toil, maybe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout this uh, this period, then this is something that uh, we have to look into. I I really uh, hope that. Uh, some good news for them uh, on, uh, in this regard. With the pensions? With the, with the pensions mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, I've tried during service, done, I'm doing have, uh, something that the what needs to be done to increase their, 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 uh, their, their pensions, particularly those, uh, those uh, medically bordered. Yeah, I believe mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the government is listening to this and I really hope that uh, as uh, as another soldier, mm -hmm. I'm a soldier. Uh, whatever rank we are, we are, we are retired, we are just a soldier. Every day we'll be known as a soldier. And I am a soldier. I really hope that uh, these uh, issues can be or Looking should be or will be addressed uh, accordingly. Mm -hmm. Tantri, um, one last question before we wrap up. What does it mean to be a warrior? I mean, uh, certainly as for a soldier, it's not so much about, um, you know, self-gain, right? It's not so, so much about uh, personal, I suppose, uh, boost. Uh, I mean, you, you are there to sacrifice uh, yourself for the country and the people. For you yourself, what does it mean to actually be called a warrior? To me, as a soldier, I believe that uh, it is all about. Uh, this is the word I use. Uh, one, uh, so uh, what a warrior should process these uh, three elements: that is, pengobanan dia, the perjuangan dia tidak ada kekal, perjuangan, satu perjuangan, satu pengabdian, and it is sacrifice. Three things. Tiga P, three P's. Three piece. Yeah, okay, when we talk about warriors, to me, it encompassing three, three things. Because there are too many other things that people have been using now. The words mm -hmm. intermittently, people use mm -hmm. uh, Palawan here. You play this or so, you become Palawan. You 
you you some uh, you you save something you know you apply you know it is these three things should be uh, within you there right. is your sacrifice uh, pengabdian uh, 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 sacrifice is peng- uh, pengorbanan, pengorbanan. Mm-hmm. Uh, pengabdian is your dedication to uh, doing it and uh, you you there is no stop in uh, pursuing whatever it needs to be mm. and as uh, you know there is no end to it is satu is one perjuangan mm. so yeah, tri, to me three pieces pengabdian pengorbanan pengorbanan perjuangan, pengorbanan, perjuangan. the mm. fight perjuangan the yes, fight for it yeah. we will fight and that's it and that's why mm. that's why uh, you look in, into all these ad soldiers they are so proud of themselves you can go to um, you can go to uh, Felda in uh, where was this in Pahang mm-hmm. soldiers they were the first batch that sent there been sent there to mm-hmm. open up Felda mm-hmm. as a project mm-hmm. you can see them that evening they will be smartly right. dressed because that is what they are right and myself, as what I say just now, I believe soldiering. When once you're a soldier, I believe that you are you. You came in. We we look for you. You die. We we'll make sure to put the Malaysian flag on your coffin, mm. because that is what the respect that we should be giving to a soldier. Well, thank. I mean, rightfully put, and very. Um, inspirational Cogent country. and yeah, mm-hmm. very very deep, Mm-mm. deep uh, response. Yeah, on that. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is the end of the episode. Now, if you do like this episode, please don't forget to like, comment, as well as subscribe. Turn on that notification bell if you haven't already. You will be not only getting beyond the headlines update. Any other news reports under NSC Online will be delivered to you. Now, I hope today's discussion um, will kind of change your mindset in terms of how we view Hari Pahlawan. Uh, certainly away from being ceremonial and more about its essence, right? Uh, thank you again, Tan Sri Raja Fendi, for You're being welcome. on I Beyond the Headlines. I'm and happy. And also, <laughs> I'd like to, before I forget, uh, wish you Hari Pahlawan Selamat thank Hari you, Pahlawan Tan Thank Sri. you so much I, And thank you for your 40 re- over years of service I really the hope the country now I would like to see next uh, Maybe by 31st It will be pages of uh, Pages <laughs> of uh, yeah. In the newspapers and newsprint uh, Saluting those who have sacrificed themselves Whether mm-hmm. it's military men Whether it's a policeman mm. They have given their best mm-hmm. Their best part of their life They have given to this country remember that mm-hmm. that is the best part right thank you so much again thank you Hazwin no thank problem. you to our audience my name is Amalina Kamal and I'll see you next week <laughs> <laughs>